welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I would like to once again welcome you into the kitchen with me where we're going to have some fun making an old recipe that I had forgot about that I had and that I haven't made in a long time. We're going to be making buttermilk potato bread. Yes, it's simple, it's easy, very few ingredients, so let's start having some fun, y'all. <coughs> Alright, in my big bowl, I'm going to add, now this is three quarters of a cup of fresh cooked mashed potatoes, and that is... Sorry about that. And that's also one cup of melted pure butter. Butter inside. Good grief. But you want to use plain cream potatoes. Just cooked plain potatoes. You want to make sure you get all that butter out of there. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. Yeah. And you can use a potato ricer if you want to, or you can just mash them up with a fork. A fork is what I use. Okay, next we're going to work on proofing our yeast. Here I have three quarters of a cup of reserved potato water. And potato water is water that the potatoes cooked in. I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. And this is going to feed the yeast. <coughs> All right. And you're going to want four teaspoons of fast rising, fast acting yeast, or whatever yeast you have to use. One, two, three. And of course, you want your potato water uh, warm, but not too hot, so you don't kill your yeast. Alright, I will bring you back as soon as the yeast has proofed, and I will see you here in a bit. Okay, the yeast has proofed. I have to watch this yeast because it's fast. All right. Now, me personally, I like little baby chunks of potato throughout the bread. It doesn't bother me. But if you have uh, a texture issue, you can puree them real good to make sure that they're absolutely pure. Uh, smooth, I mean, pure. Good grief. Okay. So, I'm going to add my yeast into the potatoes. And then I'm going to add two cups. And I use whole milk, buttermilk. I do not use any light buttermilk, but if that's what you have to use, go for it. And you want two cups. And I'm using the Bulgarian style because that's what I grabbed. I'll make sure you get all of that into your bowl and 
And this is such a wonderful tasting bread. And we're going to want to add two teaspoons of salt. don't forget salt is not only a flavoring but it is a preservative and then get that mixed all around and this is a good old-fashioned bread all right next you want two eggs Two large eggs. And you want to mix them well. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. Now, depending on the day you make your bread and how you store your flour, we're going to need about seven cups of bread flour. Now, if your flour is stored very well and dry, you might not need as much. It all depends on your flour. I love making bread. Okay. And of course, if you're blessed to have one of those really nice stand mixers. You can use it. And the stand mixer I have is my two hands. So. Yeah, still soggy. And of course, this is going to make two loaves of bread. Now, if you don't want to make bread with it, you can make rolls, dinner rolls as well. And let me tell you, it makes some amazing dinner rolls. All right.
time to stand up and get ready to do some kneading. We want to knead it really good to build up all that wonderful gluten and bread. And I can already tell that it's going to turn out to be a nice, really soft loaf of bread. All right. I've got to knead it for about 10, 12 minutes. Let me clean my finger off. And I will bring you back as soon as I'm done kneading it. Okay, I am done kneading it. You can see a little piece of potato sticking out. Just tuck that back in. I wiped out my bowl and I have olive oiled it. You want to. Oh, it's such a soft bread, soft dough. Make sure it's all oiled. I like to sprinkle just a little bit of flour on top. So it doesn't stick to the dish towel. And just like my bread, I take my bread seriously. Alright, I'm going to put this in a warm area to rise uh, about an hour or until double in size. I'm going to get my mess cleaned up and I'll bring y'all back when the dough is ready. See you after a while. Okay, the dough has rose very nicely. Pump it down. Big old air bubbles. Look how soft that dough is. Good soft dough. Beautiful dough. Now. Chain is just perfectly all the night. This one I'm going to shape like this. And I have two loaf pans that are old very well with olive oil. I'm going to put that one in there. You can see the little pieces of potatoes sticking up. Okay. That's the first way of doing it.
There's a second way where you just roll it. And it'll give you a really pretty, like, rolled design on the inside. And you see that gluten is fighting back, which is fine. It will turn out just perfect. All right. I'm going to quit working with it. I'm going to cover them up, put them back into a nice warm place, and let them rise till they're double again. And then I'll bring you back. Okay. While the oven is preheating to 375. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, they'll continue to rise in the oven. So I don't want them to get too awful big. If you want them bigger, let them keep rising. This one is bigger because there was... A little more dough than this one. Okay. I'm going to take a large, one large egg. Because we're going to brush the top. And you want... A half a teaspoon of salt. that out is just a piece of egg white that don't want to be out. You want to make sure it's good and blended. Now, me being me, I always find it funny that when I need something, it disappears. But when I don't need it, it's always there. So, my paste, ah, the oven's ready. My pastry brush has disappeared. So, I'm just going to go old school. And you want to rub gently so you do not deflate your bread. And no, don't worry, the egg will cook and you'll be perfectly fine. It's going to give it a beautiful, glossy look. Another thing, if you wanted to, you could sprinkle some garlic powder on top of the loaf right now, which would make it really good. You could do poppy seeds, sesame seeds.
you don't want to drench it, but you want to make sure that it gets all over the top of your bread. You don't want it running off of your bread. And Jaina will be getting her a little egg treat. Okay, the oven is preheated to 375, and everybody's oven is different. You want to bake it for about 40, 45 minutes until it comes out golden brown. And I'll bring you back here in a bit. Also wanted to say, when you move these to the oven, be careful. You don't want to beat them, tap them hard or anything, because your loaves will deflate. So, be very gentle with them, and put them gently in the oven. Now, I'll see you back after a while when they're done. Okay, I also wanted to talk about some other things while baking bread. You want to make sure that there's plenty of room in between the two pans. So, heat flow and air circulation, if you have um, one of those ovens that has the nice air flow and stuff, but you don't want your pans touching, you want to make sure you have plenty of room for heat to circle around. Also, you want your rack to be middle ways in your oven, that way it's not too close, especially if you have an electric oven, it's not too close to the eye and your bottom, the bottom part of your bread will burn before your top is cooked. And you don't want it too close to the top because as it rises some more, it could stick to the top of your oven. No, I am not ex talking from experience on that one. I've seen other people do it. But middle... Put your oven rack on the middle and that should give you plenty of room. Now, if you want wanted to, the egg yolk or well, the egg brushing on top, you could add a little milk to that as well. Not much, just a little bit. And that will also give it a pretty gloss. <coughs> um, but... I love making bread, and I love this bread recipe, and I know you will too. So, now I'm going to go take a break for a little bit while those beautiful babies bake up golden brown for me. I'll see you after a while. Okay, they are done, and it's time to get them out of the oven. Bring y'all right back. Okay, I have one turned out. I'm going to turn this loaf over. Look at that beautiful bottom. Now, I let them cool on a towel. You can let them cool on a wire rack. <coughs> it is your choice. Now, you hear that? Beautiful. Now, as they cool down, they will soften back up. So do not worry one bit. Alright, supposed to wait at least 30 minutes before cutting them. And I'll bring you back with some butter for the reveal. See you here in a little bit. Okay, I have patiently waited the 30 minutes. Look at the difference. Remember how hard it sounded? They soften up. And I have some melted butter, y'all. Butter. Alright. I always save the butt in for last. Look at that beautiful crumb. Hold on, let me cut my slice. And see, that's why I save the end pieces 
that way when you wrap it with either a kitchen towel or towel that keeps the inside of your bread from drying out look how beautiful the crumb is on that bread this is some amazing sandwich bread y'all it's good and moist you can see the little flecks of potato and before it cools down you know what's got to happen can't let that bread cool down oh look at that melting just beautifully oh i have earned this i'm gonna tell you it's been torture the house smells absolutely amazing look at that Oh my God. This has been too long. And yes, I'm gonna eat that crust. Don't you worry about it. Mmm. <coughs> Nothing like homemade fresh bread. Mm. Absolutely divine. Now. This is the one that I rolled and you can see just ever so slightly the roll inside and now this loaf ended up being bigger because I didn't cut my dough perfectly in half <coughs> <coughs> it's best to make sure that both Halves are the same for your loaf of bread. Now, if you don't want to put the egg wash on top, you don't have to. You could do butter. You could do a egg and milk mix and brush it on top. Or you can just leave it naked and bake it like it is. This is an amazing amazing old old recipe that I haven't had to cook in a very long time <laughs> simple easy homemade and yes y'all can do it too yeah I look rough cuz guess what it's bedtime I'm gonna finish my slice of bread I'm gonna wrap them up so they stay fresh and I hope you will try this amazing bread recipe because, yeah, buttermilk potato bread. And you don't taste the buttermilk at all. Everyone, take care. Stay safe and sound out in this crazy world because it's getting worse. Continue to stock your pantry with foods that will sustain and nourish you flour you can also get buttermilk powder all you have to do is mix it with water and you could have buttermilk because it might be a little hard later on to get milk products simple easy loaves of bread or rolls either or it's up to you how you want to make it and the recipe will be in the description box below the video. Continue to stock medicine that will heal you. Protection of many kinds. 
and the bare necessities. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And may you each be blessed. Hoot hoot. Y'all take care.